Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. <laughs> on the lava beds of Tuanbaka, Tarzan and his friends are surrounded by a shadowy band of Hesperians, the people of the savage face. Akeru, leader of the troop, informs Tarzan that he and his companions are expected in the forbidden city of Asher by Su Ten, Atef of Hesiheria. Nearing the foot of Tuanbaka, Akeru, who is well in the lead of the little party and its escort of skeleton masked warriors, is attacked by a huge flying eret or python. <laughs> The rep swoops down on great bat-like wings to enfold the Seherian noble in its bone-crushing coil. Ah! I am doomed! Shoot! You didn't down to shoot! I dare not shoot! That swaying head is too near Akeru! Don't shoot, Dono! Wait! As the ape-man speaks, the reptilian head of the winged horror stops its swaying. Its wide-fanged mouth opens, preparing to strike! <laughs> in an instant, Tarzan strings his bow, whips an arrow from the quiver at his back, fits it into place. The great muscles of his arm tense as he draws the deadly shaft back to its head. An instant's pause while the keen eye gauges the distance. Then, the flying missile screams through the air to embed itself squarely between the eyes of the great serpent. The writhing, sinuous black coils tremble, struggle to retain their grip. Slowly, the hideous mass relaxes, slides to the ground, inert, dead. Akeru lifts his arms. He turns walks slowly back to meet Tarzan. O oh, Tarzan, man of might, thou hast slain this death from the sky, thou and thy flying stick. Yeah, it was Tarzan, all right, and what a shot, with a bow and arrow. He thought he'd been good shot with a rifle, but to split a snake's skull with an arrow, Mm, that paints something. The Afridis on the Indian frontier of Afghanistan are known to be the world's greatest marksmen with the bow. But their best shot could not have hit such a target. There are no bones broken, Akeru? Nay, O Tarzan. The winged monster hath harmed me not, and I, the Atan Hakeru, thank thee for my life. Thou hast preserved it. It is thine. If ever I can help thee, it shall be done. I'll remember that. And now, do we go on? Aye. The Sanut, there at the foot of the rails, is ready. By Buddha, it is a car, and it's enough to hold 50 men. How it shines in the sun, like burnished iron. But that track leading up the mountainside is almost perpendicular. Where does the power come from to move that car? Well, it's too much for me, Lieutenant. I don't understand it. Akeru, do we go up and discover with you? Yes. I don't like it, Tarzan. What is it you don't like now, Larson? I ain't been afraid of anything in the jungle. But those skeleton masks, look at them. Climbing in that car without making a sound. You know they're only masks, Larson. Yeah, sure. But what's under them? In due time, he of the yellow beard will see what lieth beneath the savage faces of the hessy hair. Well, I can't say that I like the idea either, Larson. But if you don't go up... What will we do down here, alone? Come, the warriors of the Hesse Hare are waiting. Ye of the outer world, ride with Hakeru. Permit him, Wamagra. This step here is high. Be careful. Now, you will seat yourself here, Magra. Thank you. Ah. You are there, all right. Me! Hello! 
We have the observation seat, n'est-ce pas? Do you see, Dano? The entire car is sheathed in metal. And look, from these windows, how far one can see. Sure, Lars Larsen can see his finish. Dano, these Hesiherians are removing their masks. Mas what? Dono, Vedder. They are white skinned and handsome. Are you satisfied, Larsen? Yeah. Eh, been satisfied. Almost. Why the masks, Akeru? Thou hast saved my life, O Tarzan of the Apes. But even thou mayest not speak lightly of the ancient warrior masks of the people of the savage face. There are few of the outer world who have ever beheld an Hesiherian countenance. This sinew uh, travels fast, Akeru. Aye, Atantom, like the wind. Why, why, we are moving. No, we are going at the speed of at least 80 kilometers. But what the devil makes the thing go? There it is, Wolf. He uses that lever to slow the car up, not to make it go. What power lifts the coach out here at this speed? At the end of these copper rails on the rim of Tuanbaka, there is a great stone. The most ancient writings of our priests mention the stone. It has been there scores of centuries. And what name do you give to this great rock? It is called the stone which hath the power to pull. Well, I've been around this world plenty, but they never see such a stone. Well, you have very likely hit upon the answer, Larson. This stone is not of this earth. Probably it is a meteorite. We oui, we oui, say Satom. What the English call a lodestone. This car being sheathed in iron is attracted by the magnetic pull of that stone up there. Hakeru breaks the car to keep it from leaving the rails. Is that not right, Hakeru? It is so, Atantun. Glistening in the sunlight like some giant prehistoric silver-colored beetle, the bulky conveyance rushes up the smooth side of Tuinbaka at breathtaking speed. Presently, the outline of the great meteorite can be clearly seen. Hundreds of tons of black rock balanced on the rim of the volcano. As they near the top, Hakeru pulls back on the lever with all his strength. Slowly, as if reluctant to stop, the huge car quivers. The clanking wheels turn slower. The messy coach comes to a halt. The Hesiherians climb out, followed by Tarzan and his friends. They skirt the huge meteorite and approach the inner rim of the volcano. Far below them, on the floor of the crater of Tuinbaka, lies the forbidden city of Asher. How beautiful. Like a city of green. Vraiment, Magra. The vegetation, the entire valley is as green, green as a flashing emerald. What's the large building in the center of the city, Akeru? That, O Tarzan, is the sacred temple of Maat, Shu, father of diamond. Oh, that's where it is. Careful, Wolf. Do you see, Darno, how perfectly the city is oriented? Each street runs exactly north and south or east and west. Our share is the city of wisdom, of happiness, content. But we tarry over long. Come, follow me. Another car. This one takes us down to the city, I suppose. If the meteorite pulled us up, how will this other car take us down against the pull of the stone? Ye will learn presently, Atanton. Look! There are rails completely encircling the lodestone. And here comes an old fella pushing a flat car. What is that on it? it looks like the biggest piece of crystal I ever saw. Mm, I begin to understand. A moitome. It is the answer to your question. You see, that must be a gigantic sheet of non-conducting quartz, or as Wolf says, crystal. Placed between the meteorite and the car, the lodestone cannot exert then its power. If we, we coast down the inside of the crater. Even so, Paul Darno. And now enter the Sanut. We descend. With the speed of an arrow, the great car and its burden slides down copper rail. All the captive party, save Tarzan, grip their wooden benches till the knuckles of their hands should fight through the hot skin. Last, 
ear-splitting shriek of the clumsy brakes, and the journey to the forbidden city of mystery, our share, is ended. Without a word of command from their leader, the white-clad warriors form a hollow square around Tarzan and his companions. Come, O Tarzan of the Apes, to the temple of Ma Chu. Hmm, a wonderfully beautiful city it is. Hey, patron, magnifique. Mais where are the inhabitants? I see no one in these streets. The populace must remain within their homes until you have audience with Sutan, a tef of Hesse hair. See those copper plates at the street intersections down there. <laughs> Above each one is a small death's head mask. I saw those long ago. Don't these people know how to carve anything else? I thought your Champs-Élysées and Paris are fine street, Darno. It can't compare with this. The strange, exotic trees. Those rolling carpets of grass. Oh, yes, Tarzan, it is wonderful. These houses behind the walls, they are white marble. Hey, gee, I wonder where they got it. Uh, that temple we're coming to ain't white marble. It's black. Black as the shades of Abaddon. And built in the shape of a pyramid. What bend that on top of it? See how it shines. It looks like a great ball of burnished copper. It is just that, Magra. Exactement. But what its object is, I do not know. Tarzan of the Apes, I have made a vow to aid thee, and so I shall. Suten the Great is provoked. Strangers be not welcome in the city of Asher. We are sufficient unto ourselves. That is why the few who know of us name Asher the forbidden city. Answer me, with truth upon thy tongue. Come ye here for plunder, or solely in search of your friends? We came because we believed Helen Gregory and her brother were here. For no other reason. And Tarzan does not lie. It is well. I shall intercede for ye at the feet of Suten. Look at those stones in the temple. Solid copper. And they must be twenty feet wide and twice as high. Listen. That ain't singing. What ye hear, strangers? Slowly, majestically, the mighty copper doors swing open, moved by some unseen force. Louder swells the minor primitive wail, a chant of many voices. Tarzan and his friends pause. They stare into the face of Hakeru. The blood drains from the Hesiherian noble's countenance, leaving it as if cast in a mold of ivory. He turns slowly to meet the questioning gaze of Tarzan. It is the chant of death. Mahachu, the father of diamonds, demandeth the sacrifice of human blood. <laughs> 